Okay, this is question two from October 2022. Uh, this is quite a tricky moments question, so definitely worth having a look at. Um, let me draw the diagram out while uh, you're reading through the question here. We've basically got a rod. Oops. A, B. And we've got a string acting here. So we'll have a tension there. We've got a string acting here. So we've got a tension there. Uh, they've told me that this is two fifths A in the question. And they tell me that the rod is uniform and has mass M. So I know M is going to be acting down there. Capital M is going to be acting down there. And that acts at the halfway points. So that acts at A, which means that's got to be three fifths A there. And this is two fifths A because this is three fifths A here. So that's our setup. And it says a particle P is placed on the rod at B. So I've got some particle P which is placed on the rod there. And I'm gonna say, right, so the weight acting down is mg there, and the weight acting down is pg there. It then says, um, the rod remains horizontal and in equilibrium. Find in terms of m the largest possible mass of particle p. So I want this one to be as big as possible. And I'll be honest with you, this, this caught me out for a little while. Um, because I put all my forces on and I started resolving and doing all the things you did. And what I didn't realize, so the key is, if this force there is gonna be the maximum it can possibly be, when it gets to its maximum, this string will go limp, okay? It, it's on the point of um, pivoting round, isn't it? So TC can be considered to be equal to zero. That's the key to this question. Okay, so even when I do it, I can do it and resolve vertically without putting that information on. So to start off with, I just resolve vertically. And I say, okay, TC plus TD is equal to MG plus PG. The forces upwards are equal to the forces downwards. And it was at this um, point, I had too many variables. And then I suddenly realized um, if P is as large as possible, then TC can be considered to be equal to zero. Well, okay, that means that now I've got TD is just MG plus PG. That's going to help when I do my next part. So now I want to take moments. I can take moments about anywhere I want. I can take it about, well, let's put my other letters on. Sorry, that's C there. And that's D there when we're doing it. So I could take moments about A, about C, about D, about B. I could take moments about M if I want to. But what I want to do when I'm taking moments, ideally, is to make sure that the um, variables I've got are as limited as possible. So I'm going to decide to take moments about C. If I take moments about C then what do I get? For moments about C, looking up here, I've got that one times that length, I've got that one times that length is going to be equal to TD times that length, okay? Clockwise is equal to anti-clockwise. Stop and have a look at that again if that doesn't make sense to you, but that's gonna be for me MG Sorry, mg times three fifths a plus pg times eight fifths a is going to be equal to td times a. Now we can immediately just cancel. Well, let's just tidy it up. But when I'm going to be tidying up, I'm going to cancel the g's. No, let's just cancel the a's to start off with. So I'm going to cancel that, that, and that. So I'll get 3 fifths mg plus 8 fifths pg is equal to td. And now when I combine these two equations, now I'm going to cancel the g's in a second. When I'm combining these two equations, okay, so what I'm going to do is get rid of td out of here by replacing it 
by mg plus pg in that one, okay? So I'm gonna substitute number one into number two. These little labels, these little things like that I'm doing like that are really useful for the examiner in case I've made a mistake anywhere that they'll be able to follow my working a bit better. Maybe you guys be able to follow my working a bit better as well. So here, I think I've got three fifths mg plus eight fifths pg is equal to mg plus pg. And again, I'm always looking to cancel M's and A's in these sorts of questions if I can. So it doesn't surprise me to be able to do that. This is now relatively straightforward to just rearrange it all. I've got 8P over 5. Let's get the P's all onto that side, minus P. And I've got M minus 3M over 5. On that side, I'll leave you to work that out, but P works out to be equal to um, 2M over 3. And it's P that we were trying to find, yeah, the largest possible value of P. So P, in that case, works out to be equal to 2m over 3. Let's look at part B. What does part B say? Part B says, right, given now that the mass of P is equal to a half M, find in terms of M and G the tension in the string at C, TC. We're going to have to find for this next one. Okay, so if I'm going to find that one, I'm going to take moments again. And this time, because I want to find TC, if I take moments about D, then TD disappears as one of my variables and everything should work out. So if I take moments here about D, when I do that, I'm going to get TC times A, oops, sorry, plus MG over 2 times 3A over 5 is equal to mg times 2a over 5. Go back at the diagram, just have a look at what I'm saying there. Okay, it's, if I'm taking moments about d here, it's this one times this length plus this one times this length. They're both going in that direction, aren't they? So those two will be counted by this one times that length, okay? Go back and stop the video and check it to see where I get that from, leading to that as my um, expression, equation. And now tidying everything up on here, we've got TC is gonna be equal to, well, the A's can cancel. Take everything over to the other side and get two MG over five minus three MG over 10, I get the TC works out to be MG over 10. Hopefully all of that makes sense.